How's it going friends? Reckless Yuki here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. And about four months ago, I purchased a lot of mice and a lot of mouse pads trying to figure out which is the best for FPS gaming. And I compiled this list based on what the top CSGO players use as well as what other YouTubers recommend as their favorite FPS mouse. Now this video is going to go over one specifically, but if you like to know which is the gaming mouse overall as far as for FPS games, then definitely check out the video in the link in the description. I basically went over all the eight mice that I tested and compared them based on categories such as comfort, weight, and performance since those are the three categories I feel are most important when it comes to competitive first-person shooter mouses. So anyways, hope you enjoyed the review and if you're interested in that video, be sure to check out the link in the description. Thank you for watching and uh, enjoy the review. Now let's take a close look at the Logitech G303, which is like a miniature G502, basically has the same sensor. And before we get into my thoughts and opinions of this mouse, we'll go over the basic specs. So like I said, it's like a G502. It shares the same sensor, which is a Pixar 3366 optical, which is absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love that sensor. The polling rate is able to go up to 1000 hertz, just like the G502, and the DPI is able to go from 200 all the way up to a whopping 12,000, which is absolutely insane, and the same as the G502. Now, the main differences besides the physical is the weight. The advertised weight without the cable is 87 grams, which is very light. And with the cable, it's said to weigh 127 grams, which is, you know, decently weighted. But with my gaming weight, where I take the weight of the mouse with about one foot of cord, it came to 92.36 grams, which is not the lightest, but it's definitely not the heaviest. And it definitely feels light. And it's basically the lightest mouse you could get with the 3366 optical sensor. So that is something that is very attractive with this mouse, not to mention that the sides here kind of gives a cool illuminated effect on your surface. So let me just turn off the lights real quick. And as you see, it kind of has that nice cool little glow on the sides, which I think is pretty cool. As far as the fit of this, <laughs> I kind of call this the Kung Fu death claw grip where the size of the mouse is so small that the, my hands basically have to kind of palm it and kind of really kind of get this like tiger claw grip going in order for me to use it just because the size of the mouse is so small and the size of my hands are large and the mouse itself is ambidextrous use but the buttons are on the left hand side so that may be a killer for left-handed gamers but for the most part the main functions of the mouse can be easily used with left-handed gamers now as far as the finish of this mouse the back here is just basically a matte plastic while the front kind of has this rubberized feel but still a matte finish that matches so it is kind of nice and on the side here there isn't anything as far as like any special finish it's just basically a rough matte plastic and on the back here where the light shines through is this kind of glossy clear plastic and the glow the logo doesn't have any indentions that i could feel so it's a very smooth transition from the black to the clear there is no removable weights. There is nothing to really adjust except for within the program. So that's something to kind of keep in mind if adjusting weights is something that is very important to you. Now, as far as the click, I mean, the clicks are just fine. This mouse responds very well. Uh, the only thing that I really don't like about it is, is it's not really comfortable for me whenever I'm using this mouse. Now, I love the fact that it's lighter weight than the G502. I just wish it was like a bigger, more robust body, something for me to really grab onto where the size of this mouse kind of the way that I have to grip it with my Kung Fu claw grip, it makes my hand hurt after about two hours of gaming, like especially after, especially after two hours, but I say about maybe after an hour, my hand starts to cramp up, but after two, it definitely starts to cramp where I have to kind of consider stop because of my hand just hurting using this mouse. Uh, responsiveness is good. Like I said, it has the 3366 optical sensor. So I'm in absolute love with that sensor. I really do like it a lot. And as far as the shake, uh, This mouse is just solid. There's nothing really to shake about this mouse. I mean, it's kind of a real basic mouse. They just have the forward back, the DPI switch here, um, and then just the left and right. And there's there's not much else. And it has the scroll wheel, which the scroll wheel feels nicer than some of the others. Uh, not as nice as the G502, but it's still not very spongy compared to some of the other scroll wheels I've been using. So. You know, overall, it's a it's a fantastic little mouse. I do like this. I just wish it was a little bit bigger, like I said. But overall, if you have like smaller hands, then this could be something that would be very attractive for you, especially if you're a fan of Logitech, if you're a fan of the 33, 3366 optical sensor. 
Um, and maybe just the fact that you like the looks and the appeal of this mouse is definitely an attractive mouse. But anyways, let's go over to the Logitech gaming software so I could show you the controls with this mouse so we could take a closer in-depth look of what you could do with it. So here we are with the Logitech gaming software. And as you can see, this is the G303, which is displayed on the home screen here. If it was another mouse or another gaming device, you'll be able to see them listed here, which you could cycle between them to control whichever gaming device you want from Logitech that you you so do desire. Now, as far as how this works, it basically works like any other device that Logitech offers. You can have the onboard memory used or you could set up the automatic game detection, but I prefer just to leave it as the onboard memory. If you click this button here, you could change the buttons in which you want it to basically be so you could fully customize up to three profiles. Now there isn't a profile selection like there was with the G502, but that's something that I never really needed or ever felt that I was lacking. So I don't really care about that too much. Now the DPI, you could change it with five levels of sensitivity and basically just have it set up here. Kind of the same with all the other mice and then you can sign the default of which you want the DPI to be set at every time you start up the PC. So instead of having something like at 12,000 every time you start up, you could have it set to a, you know, a conservative of 800. It was just something that I set up for gaming. And then you could have it set the polling rate in which you choose 125, 250, 500, 1000. And just like the G502, this is comfortable to use at 1000. So one millisecond response times is fantastic with a 3366 sensor. Absolutely love doing that. Now, this is something different that the G502 didn't have, which if you have the newer one, this will have something similar, but the Proteus Core did not. And that's you could adjust the LEDs to your specific like color that you want. And so you can have a color cycle, a breathing effect, a brightness, the rate in which it is going. And you can have like on, like have the logo on or the sides, you know, kind of customize what you actually want. And then you could change how fast that everything is spinning to this nice, I guess, <laughs> techno or like rave vibe and then brightness as well on how bright you want it. So lighting effect off you can kind of go here and pick a static color of what you would like. So, you know, kind of a purplish pink, whatever, or just use the wheel and turn it to your desire to perfectly match your theme or setup. So that's something pretty cool, but I kind of like this color cycle, something that I enjoy. And then if we go over here, just like the G502, there's the surface tuning, which I will show you on the screen now. So second, let's turn this on. So at the top left corner, you see my hand, and we'll go over here to retune just to kind of return for the surface here. And if you hold the left button and move in this figure eight, it will basically start the tuning process. And you have to make sure you go fast enough for it to read your surface. And you want to like, if you have a mouse pad, you basically want to cover the whole mouse pad surface. And then it's analyzing the surface and tune is complete. It is finished. And now it's a very accurate surface or very accurate sensor for your specific gaming surface. So pretty cool overall. So, I mean, just a, just a simple program that's easy to use. That's very intuitive. That's not very confusing, unlike some other programs out there. So anyways, that's my review of the Logitech G303. Um, final thoughts is I just wish it was a little bit bigger to be friendly for the large handed users because it is a lighter mouse than the G502. But just the fact of the shape and the size of it just kind of makes my hand cramp after a while where I don't really enjoy using it. But I enjoy using it when my hand isn't fatigued. So it's kind of, I can use it up to a certain point before I have to stop. But that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to check out one of my other reviews. And I will talk to you guys again in the next video. All right. Bye-bye.